on the shahada of our fifth holy imam imam muhammad al-baqir salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh allahumma salla ala muhammad wa ala muhammad unfortunately our fifth holy imam is one of those imams whom we know very little about and it is very important for us to strive to learn about the lives of those role models who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down in this world for us to learn from. That we need to emulate their lives, we need to see what they have achieved in their lives, how they conducted themselves in their lives so that we can also benefit, we can also try to copy them, we can try to emulate them, we can try to learn from them by knowing what they did during their lives. If we don't even know what happened during the time of our fifth holy imam, who the khulafa were, what type of troubles and trials he had during his time, what, how he overcome these troubles, how he managed to surpass all of these trials. If we don't even know that much, then how are we supposed to take this imam to be a role model for us? How is that possible? Our fifth holy imam, he lived for 57 years. He lived until the age of 57. He was born on the 57th year AH and he died on the 114th year after Hijrah. So total of 57 years he lived. Out of those 57 years, because of the fact that the fourth holy imam's imamat was one of the longest imamats that were there, we find that the fifth holy imam was the imam of our time only for 19 years. 19 years out of the 57 years of his, he was the imam of the time. And we find that during this time, the fifth holy imam made certain achievements which other imams could not achieve in their times. Why? Why is it that the fifth holy imam could achieve these things and other imams could not achieve this? We find that during the time of the fifth holy imam, the khulafa who were there, one of them was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who was a little bit more relaxed with the Ahlul Bayt. You find that the khulafa at the time of the fifth holy imam were not putting as much pressure on the Ahlul Bayt as, as there was with the other imams. Therefore, the fifth holy imam managed to achieve much more in propagating and making the message of the Ahlul Bayt reach us compared to the other Imams. Many of the hadith, many of the fiqh hadith that we have in today's day and age, in Usul al Kafi, in uh, other books of hadith that we have, Wasail al Shia, we find that many of these hadith they come to us through the fifth and sixth holy Imams. Why? Because of this relaxed nature of the political situation at that time. We find that the fifth holy Imam is the first and only imam who was, his lineage goes back to both Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That he was the son of the fourth holy imam and from the fourth holy imam he has direct lineage to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And from his mother he has direct lineage to Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Because the fourth holy imam married his own cousin who was the daughter of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Therefore, the fifth holy imam's mother and father, both lineages were so pure that he is both Hassani and Husseini. This is the fifth holy imam. We find that the laqab of the fifth holy imam, what do we call him? Imam Muhammad al-Baqir. Baqir al-Uloom. That he was the splitter of knowledge. Who gave him this laqab? Who gave him this title? It was the Holy Prophet of Islam himself, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. That one day the Holy Prophet of Islam is sitting with his grandson, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And his grandson is at a young age and he is playing and the Holy Prophet is sitting over there and one of the companions of the Holy Prophet named Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he comes to the Holy Prophet. And the Holy Prophet 
In front of him is Imam Hussein, and he points to Imam Hussein and he tells his companion, do you know that from the lineage of my grandson, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, from his lineage will come somebody who will be of my name, ismuhu ismi, wa shama'iluhu shama'ili. Not only his name will be my name, but his virtues, his attributes will be my attributes. He will have my attributes with him. And this person will be called Baqirul Ilm. That we find Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari after he heard this from the Holy Prophet, he used to go in the mosque and he used to sit outside the mosque and he would say, Aina, Aina Baqirul Ulum. Aina, Aina Baqirul Ulum. And people would say, Who is he calling? Who is he calling? They don't know who he's calling. But then after years and years and years pass, and when now in Ahlul Bayt, a young boy is born, and this young boy is coming towards the mosque, and Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he sees this young boy, and he says that, uh, I want to ask you a question, what is your name? And the boy says that, I am Muhammad al-Baqir, Baqir al-Ulum. At this point in time, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari becomes so happy that now the news that the Holy Prophet had given him, that he would be meeting meeting somebody during the lineage, part of the lineage of the Holy Prophet, whose name would be the same name as the Holy Prophet, whose attributes would be the same attributes. Finally, it has come true. He says, oh, Imam Baqir, I have a message for you from the Holy Prophet of Islam himself, that he has passed his salams, special salams to you. And Imam Baqir alayhi salam replies, and he says, may the salam of mine be on the Holy Prophet for the whole of the time that this earth is there and for the whole of the time that the Akhirah is there. All of this time I want my salam to be on the Holy Prophet of Islam and I want my salam also, I pass my salam to you, O Jabir, who is the bearer of the salam of the Holy Prophet for me. So this laqab, the title of Baqirul Ulum, is given to the fifth holy imam by none other than the holy prophet of Islam himself. This is who we have in front of us. And we know all of this hadith that we mentioned. These are hadith which were given to us by Imam Baqir. So many hadith which have come to us. And I want us to focus today on one of these hadith. And inshallah we can try to implement this in our lives. And we can see how we can improve ourselves because, the te because of the teachings of our fifth holy imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, salawatullahi wa salamuhu That the fifth holy imam in, ka kama um, um, in Kamalu Ziyarat, in Kamilu Ziyarat, sorry, in Kamilu Ziyarat, the fifth holy imam has a hadith whereby he is narrating that if a mu'min sheds tears for Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, and these tears of his, they come out of his eyes and they fall onto his face up to the point where it reaches his cheeks. If somebody sheds tears for the third holy imam and these tears reach his cheeks, the fifth holy imam says that this person, I assure him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep a special room for him in Jannah for the tears that he has shed for Aba Abdullah al -Hussain. That you will get Jannah for sure, that there is a room for you which has been assigned to you already. The moment you cry for Aba Abdullah al Hussein, we are in the days whereby Dhul Hajj is now already coming to an end and Muharram is going to be starting. We are so close to these Ayyam al Muharram, the Ayyam of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. There are people who prepare for Muharram from one year in advance, that they try to make sure that their hearts are soft, that when the time of Muharram comes, they will not be amongst those who are sitting down and the masaib of Imam Hussein is being read, but they cannot even shed one tear from their eyes. We need to prepare ourselves, make our hearts soft for Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Prepare to cry and shed tears for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That he says that this room will be guaranteed for anyone who sheds the tears. But there was somebody I was talking to and he said that there can be misunderstanding in our community if you mention this hadith without emphasizing on the fact that these tears have to be with ma'rifah of Aba Abdullah. 
They're not tears which are just because of sadness. They're tears because of ma'rifah of Abba Abdullah. That you cannot say that I am crying for Imam Hussein, but I do qadha or fajr. This is not ma'rifah of Imam Hussein. You cannot say I am crying for Imam Hussein, but I don't fast in Mahir Ramadan. This is not ma'rifah of Imam Hussein. Ma'rifa is to know what he was standing for. He was standing for some principles. That if you realize this and then you shed the tears, then for sure you will get the room in Jannah. Please recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The importance of Muharram that Imam Baqir السلام, is trying to emphasize on. Let us make sure that we realize this importance. One of the great shuhada of Iran who died, who became shaheed in the Iran and Iraq war was called Shaheed Babai. Shaheed Babai was the commander of the Air Force. He took care of all of the Air Force in Iran during the Iran-Iraq war and he became shaheed. He was of a very great caliber. He was one of those great mu'min who actually had the ma'rifah of Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. That when Muharram was about to come, Shaheed Babai goes to Imam Khomeini, rahmatullahi alayhi, and he tells Ayatullah Khomeini, Imam Khomeini, he tells him that I want to take a leave of absence from the Air Force for just 10 days. And Imam Khomeini turns to him and says, why do you want to take a leave of absence? If you are part of the Air Force, you will still get the majalis. You will still get all of the azadari. It's not that you will miss out on the azadari. He says, no, I want to take a leave of absence because I have made a promise. I have made another to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every Muharram, I would go to one of these villages in the outskirts of Tehran and I would serve in the mosque in organizing the the shoes and slippers outside that I would help by washing the cups which they use to give tea in Muharram I have done a promise to Allah that I will serve in this way you know what the reply is from Imam Khomeini he replies he says that wait I give you this permission to go on a leave of absence if you do me one favor one shart one condition when you're washing these cups do niya that some of these cups are washed for me as well. This is the ma'rifah that they have. That they're willing to sacrifice for Abba Abdullah. The way Abba Abdullah sacrificed for us. That we find that in the Quran, the ayah which I recited in the beginning, ayah number 27 of Surah Hajj, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا عَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Hazrat Ibrahim after he, after he builds the Kaaba, Allah tells him, stand up and give an announcement to the people to come for Hajj. According to Riwayat, Ibrahim turns to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says that, O oh Allah, I will shout out with my full voice, but who will hear? The few people who are around will hear. We are in Mecca, we are in this place which is a desert. At that time it was just a desert. Who will hear? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do what I have commanded you. Make the call to all the mu'mineen and I will make sure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will make sure that the call will reach everybody for all times. Not only even now, it will surpass time, it will surpass space, it will go everywhere in the whole world. That we find until today, we find the mu'mineen when they go for hajj, what do they say? Labbaik, labbaik Allah, Allahumma labbaik. They say labbaik, to which call? To which call? Labbaik means I am answering your call. Which call are they saying labbaik to? The call that Ibrahim made under the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way the ulama say that, on the day of Ashura, when Imam Hussein alayhi salam stood up and he said, Hal min nasirin yansuruna. This call that he made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it surpass all time and all space. That even until today, 
when in, in the month of Rajab, when we are reciting the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam of Rajab, there's a special ziyarah to recite of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Rajab. When we're reciting this ziyarah, inside the ziyarah it's written, Labbaik da'i Allah. O oh, Imam Hussein, O oh, the caller of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have called us towards Allah, we are saying Labbaik to you, O oh, Imam Hussein. Until today we are saying Labbaik to Imam Hussein. What does this mean? That means that the call that Imam Hussein had surpassed all times. And this is the call that Imam Baqir alayhi salam is making sure that every single one of us give importance to this call by giving this hadith that when you cry, if your, ear, your, your tears reach until your cheeks, you have a special room in Jannah. Assalamu alaikum, ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. We find that Imam Baqir السلام, was present in Karbala. We find that being a ma'soom, he had the ma'rifah of what was happening. He was a young boy. According to riwayat, he was only three years of age. But even at that time, he was aware of what was happening around him. When he saw that his uh, grandfather, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he is on the battlefield and he is lying and shimmer is on his chest. He was aware of what was happening around him when he saw his own father. Even a young child who is not ma'soom, if you do something to their father, you find that that uh, child has that much awareness that he feels uh, bad when something happens to his father. What about Imam Bakir alayhi salam, who was present when his father got the chains on his neck? Who he was present when his father was tied? His hands, his feet, and his neck was covered in chains. How, how did Imam Baqir alayhi salam feel at this time? We find that uh, Imam Baqir, during the ending of his life, it is said that he was poisoned. Uh, he was poisoned with such poison that it is said that when it entered through his body, his body started shivering and shaking from this poison, so much so that you could see his face turning color. You could see the pain on his face. Uh, this is the Imam of uh, their time. This is uh, Ma'asum. What has he done wrong? Uh, yet he is poisoned in this way. Uh, it is said that one of the wasiya of Imam Baqir alayhi salam was that after I die, he was telling his son Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he said, after I pass away and after you have buried me, take this money that I have and make sure for the next 10 years in Mina, in the land of Mina, make sure that there is majalis of Aba Abdullah, that this majalis should not stop, that this is the importance that he used to give, that we should remember Aba Abdullah, that we should not take this lightly, don't say Muharram is coming just 10 days, it will pass, no, this is something we should understand, how the value of it uh, and in his last breath even Imam Baqir was showing us this importance uh, that he was uh, the one who had the same name and he had the same attributes of the Holy Prophet uh, but there was somebody else who had the same attributes of the Holy Prophet in Karbala uh, that Ali Yunil Akbar uh, in Karbala when he's going to the battlefield uh, and Imam Hussein alayhi salam cannot bear his own son uh, going on to the battlefield and then he follows him uh, and then he also tell you like but turns around uh. He says, oh Baba, oh Baba, why are you following me? You have given me permission to go already. And Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, if only you would know, if only you would know the pain that is there for a father to let go of his son. And then we find that Imam Baqir alayhi salam, when he was there in Karbala, he must have also seen, he must have also seen Bibi Sakina alayhi salam. And he must have seen the way that the enemy enemies were slapping her on the cheeks and the way they were pulling the earrings from her ears. Uh, imagine how he must have felt uh, that when we only hear about it, uh, we cry. Uh, imagine if you see it physically, how much pain uh, and suffering that Imam Bakr went through.
knew that when he saw that when they were on the way to Kufa and the news came from Hazrat Muslim Ibn Akil that he has passed away, that Imam Hussein took the daughter of Hazrat Muslim Ibn Akil and put his hand on her head. But at the same time, he saw in Karbala that his own, his own aunt, his own baby Sakina, he saw the way she was treated after her father passes away. Uh, imagine how Imam Bakr must have felt in all of these stages uh, that when he is growing up uh, and he is seeing his father is always crying, uh, that Imam Zainul Abidin would cry and cry and cry. Every time a goat would be slaughtered, he would cry. Every time he would do wudu, he would cry when he saw the water. Imagine Imam Bakr is there in all of these uh, stages and he is seeing his father crying. Uh, imagine how how he feels this is a masoom this is someone who has a marifa of Abu Abdullah al Hussein ala la'natullahi ala al qawm al zalimin wa sayalamu al ladina zalamu ayyamun qalabin yanqalibun mat al Hussein